Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us today for ShareFaith Websites version 7 webinar that we're doing today. Uh, so excited to have everyone here and be able to really showcase this latest version of ShareFaith Websites. If you are a current member of ShareFaith and you've already had experience with ShareFaith Websites before, you have probably already got a chance to get into your site in the past week or so and be able to see a lot of the changes that have come with ShareFaith Websites version 7. Uh, and if you're not a ShareFaith member yet, then I think you're going to find this to be a very informative uh, webinar where we'll have lots of different information for you guys explaining some of the new features that we've recently added and showcasing really a lot of what ShareFaith websites can do. Either way, I think you're going to get a lot out of this webinar. That's my hope anyway, to make sure that this is a real fruitful time for you guys and that you really walk away more confident in knowing more of what you have at your disposal now with ShareFaith websites version 7. Before we begin, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know this is a webinar so if you look on the right hand side of your screen you'll see a chat box there where you'll have the ability to chat amongst yourselves of course just to make sure that everything's working for you if you wouldn't mind going ahead and putting in the city and state or country that you guys are viewing from just helps us to kind of see who's here today and get an idea for that as well as just make sure the chat function is certainly working for you and we'll be able to also uh, pop in there and I'll do my best to answer questions as we go along through this presentation and uh, towards the end, we will have a live Q&A event where I will be sure to hop on there and answer any questions that might not get answered during this time and do my best to showcase anything that I might have missed it well as well as or if you have any special requests for any demonstration at all, do my best to uh, fill in for that depending on how much time we have for that. So again, thanks so much though for, for joining us today and we'll go ahead and get started here. Before we do, I want to introduce myself. My name is Zach Merritt and if you've been to any of our webinars in the past, you've seen me uh, do these before. And I've worked uh, here at ShareFaith for about five years now, doing lots of different things, uh, mainly working with our members and right now I'm working in our product outreach division, essentially doing webinars and also uh, areas of uh, video, uh, different areas of video and, and things like that to help you guys understand more about our resources and how to utilize them best. Uh, also on a personal note, I serve in our in uh, my local church as a youth pastor and Sunday school director. So for those of you here who are ministers who are taking on your church website, know that I'm right there with you. I know exactly what you are uh, getting involved in and worked with many people in that position before. So uh, hopefully, you know, I'll do my best to Make sure that you guys feel 100% confident in making sure that you can have an awesome looking church website with as little time and effort as possible. So as we go ahead and get into this, uh, before we uh, look at websites specifically, I want to make sure you guys know uh, all the things that ShareFaith does. And ShareFaith has been around for a long time. We've been doing church websites since 2011, and we have over 8,000 website members already. But uh, on top of websites, we also do things like church mobile apps. Uh, we have an online giving solution available. We do worship media and presentation uh, with over 70,000 resources in the worship media alone. And we have an awesome Sunday school resource called ShareFaith Kids, which is a full curriculum. Uh, it has uh, about 80 lessons and counting now and tons of different things that are being introduced in that as well. Uh, we just released ShareFaith Kids version 2. So any of these things, if you guys are interested in learning more about, definitely go to sharefaith.com after this webinar and find out more about the different resources that we have. As I mentioned, ShareFaith has been around for a while. In fact, we've been over, over 10 years now and ho served over 100,000 churches around the world in that time. And uh, I just made this little map so you guys can see an example of some of the locations of active ShareFaith members. All of the countries that are highlighted blue have active ShareFaith members in them. So you can see we've really uh, gone around the globe and uh, I mean we're just privileged to be able to provide resources to so many churches around the world and knowing that the gospel is being shared and ministered through these resources. So that's just some fantastic stuff that I really like to share and, and really, uh, you know, I'm not trying to brag, but uh, I guess I kind of am. You know, I just liked the fact that ShareFaith has uh, been able to make such a wonderful impact and really, you know, our members seem to overall just have a very positive feedback for us about all the different things that they do for uh, do using ShareFaith. So, and for those who are members here, I hope you guys have had the same experience because you guys are really what we do this for and making sure that you guys have some awesome resources at your disposal. So, on to the awesome resources at hand. 
which is ShareFaith Websites version 7. As I said, we just released this new website version last week, so some of you have had some time to get in and play with it a little bit, but uh, as the tagline suggests, one of the best church website services just got even better. I'm really excited about this update. I think this is perhaps one of the uh, most, it may not necessarily even be the most dramatic update for those who have been with us in our whole website history. I would say it's up there as one of the most dramatic updates with a lot of different changes. But I feel like there's a lot we've done here to really refine and simplify the editing system and make it honestly just one of the most hands down best choices out there for any website editor, not even just in the realm of church websites, but any website editor that I've run across. So, uh, one of the first things that you'll notice, uh, for those who are used to version 6 and before, uh, we've really updated and simplified the editing tools. Sidekick has had a complete makeover, and we've done a lot to consolidate things and organize it so that way it's much more upfront and clear as to where everything should be at in the website editing system and being able to locate all of that and uh, just make sure that it's properly organized. I mean, it goes a long way to save you guys time and effort in putting your site together. So that's one of the major things that we really focused on with this update. On top of that, we've added some new tools for image editing and typography. So uh, the image editing feature, I know a lot of people are going to be excited about being able to do uh, more basic edits just a lot more quickly and effectively and uh, having more freedom in that realm. Also with typography, uh, our font system has been overhauled. And so uh, we've before, we've, we've already had the option to do custom site fonts, so we've just done a lot more with that now and making sure that that system overall is much easier and works a lot more fluidly and uh, making it easier for you to be able to uh, maintain your fonts across your site so that you have a very clean professional look is uh, it's just a, another way to make sure that things uh, are really tight across your site. Also, one of the biggest things that I'm really excited about is the integrated stock photo library. So we've actually uh, got connected with a royalty-free stock image service and just integrated into the site so you now have thousands of images at your disposal to be able to use for just about anything, whether it's as a background on your site or having it uh, within your blog posts as a featured image or um, on your app or through uh, the general content of your site, wherever you pretty much can imagine on your website, uh, you can utilize these stock photos at. So that's just another way to really give you more options in making the site more customizable and really making it your own. And also we have some awesome new feature improvements on the horizon that I'll just touch on. Things like the sermon player, photo gallery, blog, uh, all of those systems are going to be getting some uh, changes to them here in the near future. Uh, but really with websites version 7, the initial launch, we just wanted to make sure you guys had uh, some, amazing, some amazing updates to your tools and making things a lot sharper. All right, so that's that's just an overview, but I'm really going to go ahead and, and now switch over so you guys can see. Uh, this is the new template here for ShareFaith websites that we just launched with the version 7 release. So any of the templates uh, will work fine. They all have version 7 to them. This is just a new one that we provided on top of that. And this template was just kind of designed with a minimalist appearance in mind. So you'll see it's just a very straightforward, clean look across um, and uh, these are just some different images actually than what you see in the normal template. But the idea is the same, that it's a very minimal appearance, which a lot of churches are going for these days. A lot of websites kind of like to keep things very straight and to the point, uh, especially on your homepage area. And then you have the option to dig in deeper from there. So I will go ahead and kind of show you some of the differences. Now, as I mentioned before, Sidekick has really had a complete overhaul. And for those of you who are familiar with ShareFaith websites before, you'll definitely notice that when you first log in, this is the Sidekick control panel here with all these different tabs that highlight all the pretty colors when you go through them. If I go to the content section, that's virtually the same as before. We haven't done much with that uh, in terms of changing it. So that way it's not harder for you guys to follow. The main thing is you'll just notice we've gone with kind of a black and green look instead of just a just straight green. So kind of makes a little bit more visual separation and easier to spot um, different sections and things of that nature. And also we've made it collapsible. So you'll see the little arrows here. Now you can collapse these sections. So if really you're just trying to get into your blog post, for example, you can hide all these so they're not distracting you while you're working on that spot or vice versa. 
And uh, of course, for those of you who aren't familiar, let me just point out a few things. The navigation pages here are where your menu pages reside. So all of these are showing up in the menu, as you can see on the right hand side. And if you want to, uh, there are also additional pages. So I can have these be pages that are linked to other areas of the website. Perhaps these are hidden for some reason. Maybe I just don't want to clutter my menu with them um, and just want to have people link directly to them. Or maybe these are pages for special events that I'm not going to have up all the time. Um, you know, you can do different things here and really play with it more. And you can also move uh, these pages between any of these sections. So, for example, I have a ministries page here. And if I decide, you know, I'd really like that to go in my menu, maybe as a sub page underneath about, then you can see I can just drag and drop it where it wants to go. And I can preview these changes in real time. So now when I hover about, sure enough, ministries appears as a sub menu item underneath that. And this is all live preview, which is really nice. So I can see what I'm doing in real time before I actually save my changes. If I decide, hey, that's good, that's what I want to do, I can click apply changes and it will save those for me. Otherwise, I can also cancel. It'll just remove my changes and refresh the page for me. And then one of the new things that you guys are going to see, uh, definitely notice right off to begin with, I'm sure, is the design tab. And this is an area that we largely took a lot of things that were in the settings tab before and felt that they really needed a tab of their own and made sense to have them be more, uh, since they were all design related, have them all have their own section. So uh, as you can see, this is where the ShareFaith banners are. So uh, new ShareFaith media that comes in whenever a new website banner is included as part of that. You can drag and drop from here once you've connected to your ShareFaith account and be able to just pull it into your content areas or anywhere that's available uh, from your church website template. And in addition to the ShareFaith banners is where we have the theme settings. And this is a big one where you have control over the kind of universal theme uh, background and content, uh, or uh, I should say background and colors and things like that. So you have really a lot of your uh, freedom with customization and branding in here. So these sites, or these pages, excuse me, have all kind of custom backgrounds set for them right now, uh, which for an example, I'll just remove one so you can see. Let's go ahead and remove background. There we go. So, uh, oh, save the changes. So uh, I'll show you a bit more in that section here in a bit, but you can see uh, just some of the new options that are available through the theme settings. Now the stock photo library that I mentioned earlier is accessible through here. So that's a big one where you have the option to set a universal background that goes across your whole site uh, if there's not a predefined custom background like I was doing just there. So that means right now it's just set to kind of a gray texture and that's what will appear if there's no image selected. And now I can go through and I can select an image. So if I want to choose like a new stock photo image that I feel would work great uh, with the background that I'm working with, you can see there's lots of different things in here to choose from. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can even do searches in here. So if you're looking for something more specific, for example, you can look and see what they have. That's kind of a church style background. And uh, can do something like this. Ooh, that looks really fancy. So you guys can play with it and do different things. The alignment tool down here just kind of sets it. So depending on what the image's dimensions are, if it's kind of going off the page at all, you can adjust the alignment uh, to say where the image is coming in from at. You can play with that. So different images will use that. This one kind of fills the area so it's not so much. Or you can do a straight texture and color combination as well. And the same applies for navigation. I can do a texture and color combination there which is our navigation area up top. Right now it's just set to a solid orange, but I can deck that up a little bit if I want to choose a texture to go along with it. And you should be able to see some slight changes there with the texture options. So some different uh, choices available to you there. And of course I can change the color. Uh, it accepts a uh, color code. So if you have a specific color you guys use in your logo or anything for your branding content, then you can make sure to put that in there as well. We've got that opened up so you guys can really, again, just make it your own. And the content section uh, applies when I'm working in the actual content of the pages. This is more specific to our traditional templates. Um, the parallax templates really will use more of the site background and have their own custom background options. And so uh, anyways, these are all different tools that were previously in there, but we've just kind of moved them around to make sure they're accessible to you and uh, more clearly uh, labeled. Also, the site fonts, as I was mentioning earlier, 
So this is where you can go in and specify the different fonts that appear. So I can adjust different things for site title, which would appear if I don't have a logo there. Uh, or if you have uh, your navigation menu, you can currently see what it's set to. And I can change that. Uh, I'll just do an example here. Switch to Archivo Nero, I think is how you pronounce that. And you can see in real time these changes are shown to you so you can see what it will look like. You can even choose the weight of the font. So if I want normal or bold, uh, whatever is available in that font family, and also choosing the size. So if I want to make it any different size in here, I can as well. You can also manage and upload your own fonts, which is really cool. I don't know how many other website services really offer that type of feature, but if you have a font file saved on your computer that you like to use for different designs and things like that, you feel would be a great uh, type of font to use on your website, you can also upload those fonts and be able to have the website pull those in. Uh, and utilize those as well. So that's a really neat feature too. Now I mentioned the settings tab before. So uh, while we took some of the stuff out and moved it into the design tab, we've also actually gone through and included some new features that were previously only on the back end of We've also gone ahead and included some new features that were previously only in the advanced section of the site and added them to the front because we felt that they were more useful to have up front. And so you've got the templates, which are still here. You've got your website title up here. And so that's all still there from before. And then also the option for the favicon has been moved forward, so uh, or favicon or however you pronounce it. Basically, it's the icon that appears in favorites for someone if they bookmark your website. Also, it appears in the tab up in the top of the tab there, so it's just a visual indicator of your site if they're navigating to it from something else. And then we have the sermon settings added for here. So this is where we've kind of consolidated some different things. Uh, you can choose how many sermons will appear in a playlist at once on your page. You can also adjust some of your podcast settings. So if you do have your sermons playlist submitted to a podcast, say on iTunes, then you have the ability in here to adjust like the category that iTunes should put it under. You can also upload your podcast logo. This is just an example image that's in there right now. And you can also see uh, the different sermon playlist styles that are available. So you can change the color and everything from your sermons and the texture and everything in here as well. So we've moved all that together into one area for you. So your sermon settings are all up front now. In addition to that, uh, the Google Calendar settings are under here as well. So if you have an embedded Google Calendar on your page, then if you don't want to just keep the traditional Google Calendar appearance, may not necessarily work very well with your rest of your website design. We've added some abilities to set a darker light theme to it and then be able to adjust the general uh, background of the color of the calendar so it can match with what your website has. So all of that's been moved up front here into the settings tab so you have quick and easy access to it. So that's the major things with the uh, the new panels. I'm not going to get into the App Studio right now because I want to have uh, some time for that um, by itself through uh, maybe another time with the app and the new changes that are coming with the Church App 2.0 that we're releasing later on here. But uh, also one more thing I want to point in Sidekick before we move on, and I'm going to show you guys some of the more direct editing content features here in a second. But you'll notice up there's these three icons. So right now we're viewing the website in desktop mode. The other options available are also the tablet and phone. So what this does is it simply uh, condenses the screen down and shows you what your website will look like on different devices. This is very handy nowadays because you figure that over half of the people visiting your website will most likely be doing so through a mobile device. And so it's good to make sure that you know what they're going to see when you do that and without having to necessarily pull it up on your own phone uh, or ask somebody to do it on theirs if you don't have one. Uh, now you can simply go here and see exactly what people are going to see when they come to your site through a mobile device or a tablet or anything like that. And this just makes sure, so if you're doing anything fancy with your formatting, you can see exactly what it's going to look like uh, from their end and be able to make sure it works properly and uh, there aren't any issues. So now that I've gotten to show you guys really good examples of what you can see from the Sidekick panel here, I'm going to show you some more uh, editing features that are available now with the toolbar. So if I go to the top right corner of any of the pages here, I can click to edit. And you will notice that we've also applied the same black 
kind of skin appearance to the toolbar instead of the green that we had before. And we've done a lot with the icons to consolidate them, make them a little bit easier to identify. Uh, for example, you'll notice the alignment tools are all in one section now. So rather than having the toolbar more spread out with all the different icons, we've just decided to put it into a single drop down so it's a lot more consolidated. Also, uh, you'll notice the insert share faith feature now has the share faith icon, which will be a helpful indicator of that. And this, of course, is where you can access many of the different features that are exclusive with share faith, such as the sermon playlist system, the share faith giving, uh, if you've got that connected and you want to include a uh, share faith giving form on here um, also social feeds and different things of that nature where you want to if you want to embed any HTML so that's where you can find some of the extra features that aren't necessarily in the toolbar itself or in the sidekick panel now in addition to that uh, you'll also notice we have uh, the more uh, clearly labeled for toggling the second row of options in the toolbar and uh, mostly this is just where we keep a lot of the lesser used features or maybe some more advanced stuff like we've also added uh, line spacing which is a new feature that we've included with church website 7 so you can now designate the actual line spacing of text and you have a little bit more control over that we've also uh, switched up the padding feature to where it's a little bit more user friendly um, then you can just set a set number for padding so again that's easier to kind of keep it consistent throughout the rest of your content and these are features that you may or may not use but we know that there are plenty of designers out there that would like to have something like that so that's why we made sure to include that as well and you can find other things numbering special characters post details is perhaps one of the more widely used things that will go down in here so if you need to set a page author or for a blog post especially being able to adjust when what categories a post belongs to schedule the post things like that and this is a really nice thing that uh, with keyboard shortcuts where you'll be able to find specific actions so if you want to be able to just have a hot key to do a lot of things you can find out which ones are available through this nifty reference chart here and then you'll also see I'm sure that we made sure that the save and cancel buttons are clearly marked and highlighted with bright coloring so you guys know where those are at Now, uh, one thing I wanted to make sure you saw where you can access stock photos through the media section. So I'll click on the add media button. So this is where you can upload your own media to be able to insert into your website or access the media library, which essentially is where uh, all your previously uploaded media goes to. And then here on the left hand side is where the stock photos are. And this is where the stock photo library comes in at. So again, the search bar is here so you can search for specific photos or be able to just cycle through and kind of see the different ones that are available and be able to insert them directly into your pages that way if you wish to. So along with the editing toolbar, I'll go ahead and show you the custom background editor right here. And when it first pops up, you'll notice, of course, we have the new stock photo library integrated in here as well. Uh, so in the individual images section, you can pull those in. You can search for them just like the other areas. We also have a texture area. So if you want to just have a color and texture combination for the background, you can do that here. Or if you have a site background applied and you want to do like a filter effect over this, you can also do that by setting a color and adjusting the transparency like so. And then you can also upload your own image background too. So if you have images of your church you would like to use or ministry or perhaps something else that you found online that you would like to use that you have or the rights to use for that purpose, then you can do that. And the general settings is where you can choose from the images that you have set. Uh, let's see here. So if I have an image selected, then it appears here. And again, I can adjust the alignment and things of that nature here if I need to. And this also allows me to do a filter effect on this specific one. So if I want to do, say, uh, say I want to do a, a green color or something, then I can do kind of my own filter this way and play around with it here. Or if I just want a darker thing so that the white lettering shows up better then I can do that here and there's different options and then I can save it and it will apply that background for me so then now when people come to my site they will see the new background that I just applied now last but certainly not least I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of the newly built app studio so this is for any folks who already have a mobile church app with share faith or are looking at the complete plan which includes the church mobile app so 
Uh, when we look in here, now uh, if you are familiar with the app builder that we had before, a lot of this will look familiar. We've still got everything in place for your app name and title for the icon that shows up on the user's device um, and different things for icons and launch images, screenshots. So now uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, basically what we're looking at are different things that you can upload and uh, choose yourself to put onto your app so that way it identifies your app with your church or ministry and be able to have your very own mobile app that uh, people can download for either iOS or Android devices. So with that, uh, as we're in the mobile app builder here, or as we call it now, the app studio, uh, this will look familiar to people who have been into it before. And we've moved some things around. We've also included a design section now. And this is where you can choose an initial theme. So uh, let's go over here into the sections and I'll just select something so you can see what we're looking at. And now this is where you can choose like the top color that goes here that just kind of identifies with your app. And you'll see, uh, I just opened up the messages section which is essentially the sermons area of the app. And we've introduced some new layouts that you can utilize with your app that really uh, provide a little bit more freedom in terms of your image usage. So right now you can see I've got it uh, showing where it's previewing what people would see in the app and it's a very seamless look where it's just a, a banner, if you will, a banner image that goes with your sermon. Or you can also do a layout where it has a thumbnail with the name of the series or whatever identifying factor if that's the pastor or if it's all sermons. And then uh, all the same options to use a sermon player in here. So you can see this is where you can select uh, which sermon playlist you would like to include. So you should be able to recognize that if you've been using the ShareFaith Church app before. But we've just kind of kind of uh, spread things out a little bit more to uh, consolidate them into their own sections. So it's a little bit more clear what you're looking at. Uh, also, you'll notice the stock photo library is over here. So that's really neat because now you can actually uh, drag from any of these stock photos straight into a thumbnail for your sermons or blogs. And I know that was an issue that some folks had where it was just very particular on what the app needed for an image. But now with this new system, uh, it actually has the image editor built in and everything. So let's say if I wanted to go ahead and move this image into this spot here then it just throws it in there for me I don't have to do anything extra to resize it or scale it or worry about any of that stuff and it takes care of it all for me likewise if you were to upload your own image uh, to be an image then it would actually bring up an editor that allows you to format it and crop it however you want and make sure it's the right size for what you need so I know that's something that a lot of people are gonna be very excited about and being able to use that and then uh, here in the setup section, this is essentially everything that's needed before you go and publish the app to the store so that it's got everything that you need. Uh, so all of the details that the App Store and Google Play will need to be able to have the app on their, uh, on their interface for users to download. Now over on the right, as you can see, I was mentioning these are where the sections are at. So this is where you have control over each of those. And you can open up uh, different ones and then there's specific things that you have freedom to access. Now uh, you're also going to be excited about this. We've actually opened it up and included more options to have uh, more sections for the app. So you'll see there's a more area and you can add another section of your own. And I want to mention a few of these. So obviously we've got the sermons blog, um, the giving section that's there before, the map where you can put in an address and have it pull up uh, the location on their device. But then now the link is a special one that you can use for just about anything to link to an external thing like your website uh, or if you want to link to an external page for any reason, then you, they can do so from within your app. Also, we've included a new Bible feature to the app and I'm going to showcase a lot more of this in an upcoming uh, uh, webinar just for apps later on here so you guys can really see what this is going to look like and get a much better feel for it. Um, also the contact section which is very similar to the connect section is in here and we have links that go directly to tutorials to help you out as well. Um, another really nice section that I know a lot of people were asking about is an inbox and basically what the inbox does is it displays an archive of your push notifications. So the notifications that you send through this system and you can still type in and send these out uh, whenever you want to. So if you want to send a special message to your app users, perhaps a reminder about church service or just a friendly uh, hello or whatever you would like to send out as a notification uh, you can do that here and then you can include a link so if they swipe the notification or anything it, it takes them straight to the link that you provide right here 
Um, but also if for any reason they can't read your entire message, uh, which we heard from some Android users saying there was some difficulty there sometimes depending on the device that they had, um, or if they you know swipe it too fast and don't see it and don't know how to get back to it, um, then what will happen is it'll simply open up the inbox and show them the whole message so that way they can make sure that they, they see everything or they can go into the app themselves and go to the inbox to see it. So. We, we heard a lot of uh, requests for that and wanted to make sure that you guys were taken care of in that regard. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, there's a few different outlines here for, for layouts for blogs, um, the thumbnail view, the banner view like this, and then this one which has the image to one side and text to the other. So you can choose which one you like best for your app and you can even have multiple blog sections that use different post categories. Um, so you have a lot more freedom here is the idea. And we just wanted to make sure that you guys can do everything that you want to do within your app with really no no holds barred. So, um, and also uh, up here we still have the phone view and the tablet view, so you can always check and see how it will look on a tablet versus a phone. And then the ability to take screenshots that will be needed for your App Store and Google Play submissions. So um, that's what these guys are here. So you just take some screenshots that showcase what the app will look like for people who are interested in downloading it before they actually download it, so they know what they're getting into. So uh, that's a a quick view of the t of the uh, excuse me, of the app studio and we'll definitely be covering that in more detail here in the future so you guys keep an eye out we'll let you guys know when that's coming up but you really get to see more of what's coming with church app 2.0 and there's just kind of a sneak peek here as we've added app studio into website 7 so again this is something that's exclusive to our complete members at this time or if you were already on a plan beforehand that included a mobile app you still have that of course then uh, this is something that's included with the updates as well at no extra charge to you so that's uh, something we're continuously improving just like the rest of our services and always looking to uh, just provide more for you guys. Now, uh, since I bring up Complete Plan and everything else, I wanted to talk about one more feature that is exclusive to Complete Members for websites, and this is specific, uh, specifically pertaining to the folks who do not already have a ShareFaith website, but and that is church website migration. So this is something that we do just for those who sign up for the ShareFaith Complete Plan. And the church website migration process is, uh, uh, we do our best to simplify it, make it as straightforward as possible, but basically we will uh, do everything that you need to be able to take any content you have from an existing website. So if your church already has one, then you can uh, get the information to us that we need. And we will go ahead and within about 20 business days, get everything set up. So you'll have a brand new ShareFaith website uh, with content that you wanted to keep from your existing site. And we will do that work for you. So the first step is that we get your request and then we verify the credentials that are given to us so we can access all the information from your old site. Then we'll set up a temporary address where we can build your new site upon and then once we uh, go through all the rest of the work uh, copying designing optimizing um, there's really a ton of stuff that the guys do into it I kind of summed it up into just the one word science right there but basically our guys are working to do uh, many different factors and getting the site set up for you and then uh, we will go through we'll publish it for you so as long as we get the domain information for your old site to be able to bring to the new site then we'll complete the migration that way and get it all finished for you and then as I said the entire process takes about 20 business days and that's pretty good compared to what you might see from an industry standard of 140 days that it would take an average designer and developer to launch a w website for you so it's a pretty significant service that uh, we offer completely free to to our complete members so if you have a complete membership and you have an existing site that you would like to transfer into a share faith website we can get the ball rolling for you there and get everything set up so the site's completely ready to go then we'll turn it over to you and give you all the information you need to log into it and you can do all the customization you want from there. So we do as much as we can within that time and I mean uh, our customers have all uh, been reportedly pretty happy with the results and we tend we do uh, our best to spend a little extra time on the details and uh, really get it fine tuned for you guys so you can just pop in and, and do your thing right afterwards. So with that uh, you know, that is essentially ShareFaith Websites version 7. I thank you guys so much. I will be here for a while longer to answer any questions you guys have on the chat. One thing I did want to bring to your attention, uh, if you didn't see it in our newsletter uh, or any of our communication, but we actually did extend our Easter sale 
uh, through to the end of the month. So that's good through Thursday. We still have up to 25% off of our plans. So uh, I will make sure there's a button here for you and you can uh, go ahead and check that out uh, and see what kinds of discounts are available for the different memberships. But now is a fantastic time to renew. Uh, if you're looking as uh, becoming a new member, this is a great time to join. Uh, or if you're looking to upgrade your membership to get some of these amazing benefits, also now is a fantastic time. And uh, so feel free to check that out. Meanwhile, as I said, I will still be on here chat with, with you guys and uh, just doing my best to answer any questions you guys may have. If it gets to the end of our time today and I'm unable to get to all of those, then we'll do our best to follow up with you guys later and I'll have our team uh, make sure to check in with you. So thanks so much again, guys, for coming. God bless you and hope you guys have a great week.